As ADL's national chair, I have many, many privileges. One of those privileges is being able to introduce very special people. And it's now my pleasure, as well as my special privilege, to introduce Rabbi Francine Rostin. Rabbi Rostin received ordination in 1998 from the Jewish Theological Cemetery and served as a congregation rabbi in New Jersey for 16 years, including at Congregation Bethel, where she broke the stained glass ceiling when she became the first woman to lead a conservative congregation larger than 500 members. In 2014, Rabbi Rostin moved her family to Whitefish, Montana. The story she is about to share is incredibly troubling and puts a face on anti-Semitism today in a very, very special way. Please join me in welcoming Rabbi Rostin. In 2014, my family and I moved from New Jersey to Montana for a quieter life. I left the fast-paced world of a full-time congregation and moved to a place where I could enjoy some peace. Today, I stand before you after a winter that I would not ever call peaceful. On November 17, 2016, less than six months ago, I attended ADL's Never Is Now Summit on anti-Semitism. I never imagined that I would experience the anti-Semitic attacks that I learned about at that conference. Just one month later, in December, my community experienced vile and vicious anti-Semitic harassment, cyber terrorist attacks, and threats of an armed Nazi march. Among other awful things, we were subjected to something called doxing, a term that I had never heard of before, and I would guess many of you uh, might not be familiar with either. Doxing is when people find out everything they can about you and your family by researching on the internet. As you all know, nowadays with Facebook, internet, newspapers, uh, property records, so much more, the things that we once thought were private now have become very public. Imagine white supremacists and Nazis sharing pictures of you, pictures of your children, your home address, your email address, the location of your business, and so much more. And then encouraging others to contact you, your employee, review sites important to your business, and the restaurant and stores that you frequent. That was the start of weeks and weeks of attacks directed toward me, my friends, my community, and my, my congregation in the city of Whitefish. Very few of you have probably uh, ever heard of Whitefish, Montana before the news of these attacks. And this amazing town is in the Flathead Valley it's close to the entrance to Glacier National Park, just south of the Canadian border. The town is at the foot of a wonderful ski resort and next to an, a beautiful lake. Now, about 7,000 people live in Whitefish, and there are only about a dozen Jewish families. In fact, in the entire Flathead Valley, which is about the size of three quarters of the state of New Jersey, there are at most only a few hundred Jews. I am privileged to be the spiritual leader of those Jews. At an independent synagogue without walls and sacred community that we call Glacier Jewish Community, B'nai Shalom. So this saga begins with one of my congregants and dear friends, Tanya Gersh. Richard Spencer's mother call, called Tanya for real estate advice. Now Richard Spencer's name might be familiar to you. While he calls himself the intellectual leader of the so-called alt-right, he is an anti-Semite and a racist propagand propagator of hate and white supremacy. He calls it white nationalism. He advocates for a white ethno state. 
Richard Spencer is the man who claims to have coined the term alt-right. Last fall, you likely saw pictures of his followers responding to his speech and his cries of hail Trump, hail victory. Spencer and his mother live at least part-time in Whitefish. Richard Spencer works with people like Andrew Anglin, publisher of the largest Nazi website, The Daily Stormer, and David Duke, the former Louisiana State Representative and Imperial Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. Together with, pe with people like neo-Nazi uh, podcaster Mike Enoch, they motivate others to join them in the promotion of their ideas through their websites, podcasts, and cyber terrorist attacks on those that they perceive to be their enemies. After Tanya decided not to do business with Mrs. Spencer, Andrew Anglin used his website, The Daily Stormer, to call for a cyber terrorist attack on my community. He called it a troll storm. And when he refers to trolls, he doesn't mean those cute dolls with fuzzy bright hair that make so many of us might have grown up with. I actually think we should get rid of this term and call a spade a spade. These are cyber terrorists. While they claim to just be entertaining themselves and others, they actively terrorize their targets and make their lives a living hell. So just a few days after the Daily Stormer article, David Duke was tweeting my picture, Richard Spencer was retweeting this article. And together, the white supremacists of the United States were attacking Tanya and me and our families. Leaders of our human rights group Love Lives Here our businesses, our congregation, and the city of Whitefish. And the justification for that attack went something like this. The Jews are crooks and criminals. They are taking over the white homeland and oppressing the white people, and they must be stopped. The thousands, thousands, of articles, emails, postings, memes, text messages, phone calls, letters attacking us went on for three months. Now as an American who takes the rights guaranteed by the Constitution seriously, I respect Richard Spencer's and Andrew Anglin's rights to free speech. But when their speech threatens others and seeks to actively suppress others' right to free speech, then it must not be tolerated. As I read Andrew Anglin's articles in the Daily Stormer and the comments and graphics generated by the Stormer audience, I was scared for my life the lives of my husband and two children, and the lives of my friends and their children. You know, these weren't just uh, gross anti-Semitic caricatures, the old uh, Jews with long noses and hunchbacks. These were graphics with our pictures using Holocaust imagery, mentions of ovens, gassing, burning, shooting. The Jews must be shut down. These were not just playful insults. The message was given clearly and strongly. We seek to destroy you through these attacks. The scariest were references to lone wolves and Comet Pizza. Those are veiled messages to other haters in the cyber world who might be motivated to pick up arms and track us down. After all, they had my home address. The threat that seemed to resonate the most throughout the Jewish world was the threat of an armed Nazi march on our town. And this was the graphic that they used to promote their event. 
The march was supposed to take place on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, only they were not going to hold a march to honor Dr. King. England submitted a permit application to the city for what he called the James Earl Ray extravaganza. James Earl Ray, of course, was the assassin of Dr. King. That's the kind of people we were dealing with. While ADL and others, including law enforcement, seemed confident that the march would not materialize, we had to prepare for the possibility and we lived in fear and anxiety through Martin Luther King Day. One of the things that attracted our family to Whitefish was how safe and open life seemed to be in our small town. Now in Whitefish, people brag about leaving their keys in their cars downtown, right? They brag that they don't even know where their house key is, let alone lock the door. And life is just different now. <sighs> Sorry. Today I cannot sleep. without my doors being locked and my alarm set. I am still trying to understand what happened to us, why it happened, and if it could ever be prevented from happening to others. And here are a few things that I do know. First, there's always something that you can do. While we followed the experts' advice to not speak out publicly against the extremists, there were still acts of spiritual resistance that we could perform. The attacks began on December 14th, and the first candle of Hanukkah was December 24th. Hanukkah had never been so important to my family than it was this year. Almost every night, we lit the candles with the Gersh family, sang some songs, and then sat together to read the hundreds and hundreds of cards and letters that came each day from supporters around the country and even around the world. When you are being attacked and terrorized, your instinct is to hide. I began to hide on the internet to hide from the media, to hide from my neighbors. My Judaism was being attacked. So to light the Hanukkah candles and to light my Shabbos candles felt like this powerful form of resistance, an affirmation that I was not going to give up, I was not going to be destroyed. I was not going to allow Judaism to be weakened in the face of this hatred. Our Judaism gave us great comfort in the face of terror. Two, you can always fight back, but you cannot do it alone. So I'm a proud rabbi and spiritual leader, so it was very difficult to be quiet and not fight back publicly denounce the haters and speak out for the Jewish community. I am also the member of a larger community, including our human rights organization, Love Lives Here. And it was hard not to speak out for them and for Whitefish and for the state of Montana. And perhaps hardest of all, I am a friend and it pained me to not be able to speak up for Tanya. Another dear friend of mine soothed my frustration by telling me I wasn't running away. I was just in a boxing match. And at this very moment, I was ducking the punches. But soon, someday, I'd be able to fight back. We could never have made it through this experience without the help and support of the Anti-Defamation League. From jo From Jonathan Greenblatt's words of comfort and support, 
to Deborah Lauder, Steve Scheinberg, and Todd Gutnick's day-to-day -day counsel and help dealing with the press, making sure we were protected, helping us to respond as a community. And we were extremely grateful when Scott Levin, the ADL Regional Director, from Denver visited us a number of times to provide guidance and support. Now, ADL even made sure that we had some hearty sustenance when they sent our community a Zabar's Bagel and Lox care package. <laughs> it included whitefish, which you actually can't get in whitefish. I don't know why. We had a team of support, which included the ADL, the Secure Community Network, and the Southern Poverty Law Center. And we had friends and strangers from around the country calling and messaging, emailing, sending their support and words of encouragement. People wanted to know, wanted us to know that we were not alone, even though we felt that way sometimes. And today, the Southern Poverty Law Center and Tanya Gersh are fighting back in the courts. It is my hope that their battle will hold the cyber terrorist Andrew Anglin responsible for his actions and cause every cyber terrorist to think twice before he sends threatening messages. The use of Holocaust imagery accompanied by threatening language is harassment and has nothing to do with free speech. And last, oop, third. There are many more good people in this world and they will stand up for love. While Spencer, Anglin, Duke and their followers were terrorizing us, many in our town stood up for their Jewish neighbors. Early on, neighbors gathered in town to create, it seems to be stuck. Ooh. Can you go back one? <laughs> uh, early on, they gather to create these baskets of love that you'll see soon and shower, our <laughs> and shower our families with cards and gifts, homemade soup. Uh, they're really beautiful. And then <laughs> businesses around town posted these Montana menorahs. And these were actually posted and put up by people, by citizens all over the state of Montana in their windows, including our governor, Steve Bullock. So the governor, along with our Democratic and Republican senators, our Republican representative, and our state attorney general, together they issued a statement condemning anti-Semitism and hatred and they were joined by the confederated tribes of the Salish and Kootenai. This harassment, the, elect, the elected leaders of our state made it very clear that this harassment and anti-Semitism is not the Montana way and would not be tolerated in our state. And then when the Nazis threatened to send six busloads of skinheads and white supremacists to march through Whitefish, a non-Jewish friend of mine decided, <laughs> that's our theme, she decided we should have a party at the same time as the scheduled march so that people of good conscience would have a place to go instead of watching the march. Thankfully, the march never happened. But at the time it was scheduled to take place, hundreds of people came together in the middle school cafeteria to share each other's company and a bowl of hot soup. By the way, this non-Jewish friend of mine that came up with the idea thought that it was only appropriate that we should serve a Jewish meal. So <laughs> she asked me how to make matzo ball soup. <laughs> I, uh, she made me the matzo ball captain and we ended up cooking and serving at least 300 bowls of matzo ball soup. Uh, last, anti-Semitism is real and active. 
but our Judaism must not become reactive or exclusive. So I must admit that I wasn't always a big proponent of ADL. Even though I knew about them all my life, I saw ADL as having served its purpose. I had witnessed anti-Semitism in America in my lifetime, yet I didn't think it needed to be at the top of the Jewish agenda. I wanted my rabbinate to be creative and forward-focused rather than reactionary and grounded in the Holocaust. So this experience has really shaken my orientation as an American Jew and as a rabbi. It is very clear statistically and from my own experience that anti-Semitism has a new platform and a new strength in the past two years. Now more than ever, I believe we need to combat anti-Semitism and we must form alliances with as many organizations as possible that share our mission to work together so that our efforts are focused, efficient, and effective. With this new manifestation of anti-Semitism through social media, we need new tactics to fight back, and ADL can lead the way. But I don't think we should be fighting anti-Semitism alone. I don't believe the problem of our country that our country is facing now is inherently anti-Semitism. The problem is hatred of the other, misinformation, cultural isolation, bigotry, and fear. We must be fighting all manifestations of hatred for any group of people. We must be defending any race, religion, or culture that comes under attack. I live with fear and the effects of trauma every day. But I refuse to allow this fear to define me and my work and how I live as a Jew in this world. I will not continue to hide and I will not promote Jews keeping their heads down so we don't attract the attention of the haters. I'm going to continue to build a community that honors, supports, and celebrates diversity in Whitefish, Montana. I'm going to continue to promote a Jewish life that is lived out in this world with pride and joy. And I'm not going to hide my Judaism, and I'm not going to stop speaking out against injustice. Today, at every level of government, there are people trying to promote white supremacist, xenophobic policies and programs. We must point out the bigotry and bias behind these misguided public statements and political proposals. No matter your political affiliation, there should be no tolerance for hatred, extremism, or terrorism. We must not be quiet when Muslims are threatened, when blacks are attacked, when women are demeaned, when LGBTQ individuals are targeted, when Native Americans are ignored, and immigrants and refugees are harassed and bullied. And I am confident that the ADL will continue to combat anti-Semitism and all these forms of hatred with your support. There is so much work to be done. It seems like there are so many battles to fight. For me, the core battle is maintaining my humanity and remembering the humanity of our neighbors. I encourage you not just to meet, not just to lobby, not just to do your work in the boardrooms and the classrooms. Sit with your neighbors. Break bread. Share some matzo ball soup. Tell stories. And share your humanity. Thank you.